Hi guys, Aaron Clark here. Hope you're all doing well today. In this video, we're going to have a look at blocks and block instances, what they are and how you can use them. So simply put, block instance is a way of repeating geometry in your scene without repeating geometry in your scene. Great. So let me show you what I mean. Let's make a sphere and I want a one millimeter sphere and we're going to duplicate this a few times. Now I'm doing this with history on, so if I move that first one, everything else is going to move. Let's purge history, history purge. Now nothing's going to move. So what we've got here is, tell you what, I'm gonna drag this out a little bit so you can see my properties panel. We've got a closed surface. Matter of fact, we've got five closed surfaces. So if we were to save this file, Rhino would say that we've got five spheres and it's just going to save it as five spheres. Let's delete those and create a block instance. Just type block, block. Base point is going to be world origin because that's where I built it. So zero enter, I'm going to call that sphere. Now we've got a sphere block instance. And again, we can duplicate this. And again, we'll purge our history. So again, nothing doesn't appear like anything's changed, but we've now got five block instances. Okay, so what's happening is Rhino is saying, we've got an original piece of geometry, <coughs> and these five objects here reference that original piece of geometry. So when you save this file, it's not saving five individual pieces of geometry. It's saving one piece of geometry. And it's saving five different locations, positions, scales, and rotations of that geometry. So you, you will be able to see in your file size that it's going to be a much smaller file size because it's only saving one piece of geometry. Okay, let's take this up a step. Let's say we don't like spheres. If you double click on a block instance, you can get into our block edit. Let's say we're a fan of cubes. Et voila, we've got cubes. And let's start messing with these. Let's give these different rotations, positions and scales. Now we can still change this block here. Let's say we want that a bit bigger and everything else is going to update. And again, let's say we don't like, we don't like cubes, but we can delete that. And let's put in a round gem. and we've got gems instead. Okay, so we'll take that, we'll go and delete all of those. And we're gonna go into our block manager, block manager. Now that gem that I just imported was a block instance already. Let's delete our sphere, delete, close that. And we're going to insert our round gem one millimeter and we're going to put that in the world origin and change that to our gem color okay so we've got a round gem one millimeter and let's say that you don't want this to be a block instance anymore all we have to do is type explode explode and you can see that's been exploded into one closed solid poly surface and again now if you make duplicates you are truly duplicating that geometry Okay, bit to get through here, I'm sorry about that. So let's have a think about our block instance here. And let's have a look at file sizes. If I array uh, 10 in X, 10 in Y, 10 in Z, you want one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter, and enter to accept. So what we've got here is 1000 round gem one millimeter block instances. Let's save this. 
uh, block gem. And now let's explode. So we've instead of 1000 instances, we've got 1000 closed solid poly surfaces. Save that again. Uh, block gem exploded. Okay, that took a minute to save there. Now let me grab a um, file explorer and we'll grab my Dropbox. And so we've got our block gem here. And you can see that's 1.9 megabytes and exploded 448 megabytes. So there is a big difference in the file size between those two, two files with a thousand diamonds. Okay, so that's um, interesting. So let's go back to our gem here. Now that's a round gem one millimeter. So um, you can see that if you've got a lot of gems in your scene, by having those as block instances and referencing that original piece of geometry, you've got a massive file saving and also editing things like that. It's gonna be much quicker, much more streamlined. Okay, so here is how I use block instances. Um, I will have our gem here and we know how to make that into a block instance. We'll type block and this is already a block. We go to box edit and I have these come in as at one millimeter. Now I've got a little button over here and let's take a look at and see what that does. All that does is putting a command insert round gem one millimeter and then OK. So once you've got a block in your scene and you might want to make a little shortcut there so you can just hit that and there it goes. And let's say you want this to open up every time you open up Rhino. Well, you can actually delete that and the block is still there. All you need to do is type insert and you can see the blocks that we've got in our scene or you can go to block manager and you can see here all the different block definitions. So we know we've got our round gem one millimeter in there and all we need to do is save as template. And these are the Rhino templates that open up when Rhino opens up and you can just type in something like Aaron's template. Okay. And then you just type new, uh, sorry, go to new. Uh, no, we don't want to save changes. And then just come into Aaron's template and just check that use this file when Rhino starts. Now I've got a different template, so I'm not going to check that. But if you do, then each time you open up Rhino, it's going to open up with that template and it's going to open up with that block instance in there. So the templates control things like um, the layers that you've got here and it has any um, uh, say named views or anything like that. So uh, I think a, a video in the future will have a look at uh, Rhino templates um, but for this video you can see that block instances are saved in that template. Okay, now, like I said, I have this come in at one millimeter and that makes it quite easy to say if we want a 6.4 millimeter gem, which is one carat, it's that easy. And you can come over here and have a look at the box edit, 6.4 and 6.4. Uh, let's say we wanted a 0.8 millimeter gem, hold down shift and hit that little scale box, 0.8, and it's gonna scale that down to 0.8. So, you know, if you're working on a half carat ring and you need half carat, which is 5.3, 5.3, you can see where I'm going with this. It's quite an a, a easy and intuitive way of um, getting your gems to be the right size. Okay, let's delete that. Let's grab a ring over here. Where is it? Um, it's on my other screen here. Let's drag this in. Okay, now we can have a block instance conflict here and we'll just stick with a model block. Okay, so here's a ring that we've got and we're happy with that. It's got all of our annotations there. We don't need that. We're going to be casting and printing this, uh, sorry, printing and casting this. And we've got some block instances and you can see here 
uh, we've got round gen one millimeter block instance. Uh, the ones in the halo, they're round gen one millimeter O2, and we've got here round gen one millimeter. And we only want to affect these shoulder ones here. Now we know these blocks on the halo uh, have got a different name. They're a different block. Let's go to our block manager. And we've got round gen one millimeter O2. So we can edit that one separately to round gen one millimeter. So let's insert our round gem one millimeter. Double click that to edit it. Now, if we start messing around with this, it's going to change that center gem and we don't want that to happen. So what we can do is knowing that we've got a round gem one millimeter zero two, we can type replace block um, and select from a list and say round gem one millimeter, one millimeter zero two. Okie dokie. And there it is. So we've got round gem one millimeter zero two, uh, zero two, and this is just our normal one millimeter. Okay, we're getting there. Let's crack on. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Here's where it gets interesting. Okay, so we want to cut scallops here for our micro micro claw setting, and we want to split those. Um, in between the gems, and that's going to make it easy for the setter. Um, you know, half his half his work's already done. So we'll double click here. We're going to drop in an asset which I've just got, and it's just it's just a command to uh, to drop in that asset. And you can see it's just a stretch cylinder and a bit of a V cutter. Drag those up, scale that in, push that across. So we're sort of seeing, you know, we want the 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 claw to sort of be in that area there. Okay, and nothing's really happened so far. Let's type OK. And you can see that all of these block instances have updated with that additional geometry. Okay, let's explode. So now we've exploded this right side. So these guys here are all poly surfaces. These guys here are all block instances. Let's duplicate that bottom one. Put that into place. And let's double click on a block, delete those cutters. And these, this side here is updated. Grab those cutters, mirror them across, do our Boolean difference. And there we go. And we can split with a point this curve here. And we will pipe that with a 0.7, that's fine. Give that a little bit of a scale, mirror, and delete. <coughs> Okie dokie. And so we've got, if we turn off our gems, you can see that we've got those nice scallops in the shoulders there, um, all ready to be set. Now, we want to put a little bit of a guide hole here so we can drill as well. So again, we know that this is these guys here are poly surfaces. These guys here are blocks. Double click our block and drop in another asset and pretty simple one. That's all it is. It's a, a tapered cylinder with a rounded bottom. Drop that into place. And let's say we can delete those, mirror that across, explode those. Can get rid of that one which is in the block instance now they've disappeared from that side mirror those across and do a boolean difference again okay so now we've got those cutters uh, they've they've um, created those those holes they're ready for us to drill through in our setting process okay and we've still got our block blocks over here if there's anything else that we need to do with them Okay, so that is how I use blocks, and you can see it's a very powerful way of doing it. And again, if we wanted to scallop out this halo here, we've still got blocks up here um, with a different name, one millimeter zero two. Okay, so that's how I use it, and it's a very powerful way of sort of editing a whole bunch of geometry at the same time. Hope that helps. 
and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.